Hello, welcome to part four of my series where I'm designing and building my very own Baron. At this point, I'm now calling it the Chameleon Baron, and I'm so excited to show you this second prototype. Just before I start, I'd like to tell you that for the next about four minutes of this video, I'll be describing the design changes since the last prototype at depth. So if you'd like to skip ahead to the building and constructing of this prototype, please use the chapters below and feel free to skip ahead to the unboxing or assembly. Thanks so much and I hope you enjoy the video. Prototype 2 comes with a host of new changes, including both functional and aesthetic differences. You can see I've even given this product a name since the first prototype. So now I'll walk you through some of the major differences between Prototype 2 and Prototype 1. I'll start off with some of the more visible differences in this prototype. For one, I'm now using a powder-coated steel rather than a raw aluminum as the metal plate. This is to work with my aesthetic goals on this product, and it also gives me the opportunity to add a custom engraving, which you can see there is that small chameleon which I've designed. I'll show that in detail later in this video. In addition, using stainless steel over aluminum allows me to thin out that plate and give the Baron a more sleek feel. In addition, I've thickened the handle for extra strength and tried to minimize the size of those screw pockets to reduce the visual clutter. I decided to double up the felt pads to give it a little more softness and compliance when it's in use. Also, I stuck with the same material for the Baron pads, but I changed up the surface finish, which I'll talk more about later in this video. The goal there was to search for a more smooth interface between the Baron and the wax paper while you're printing. There were also several internal changes, but the most important of these related to the screw bosses within the Baron. I ensured that that screw boss bottoms out on the handle in order to ensure consistent compression when it's assembled. I also decided to thicken up and grow the size of that screw boss just to increase the strength. Another relatively minor change relates to the metal plate. Here I created a small slot for the screw boss to come through and the screw boss will be centered through that slot to help allow for any variation that might occur within the parts. This helps to ensure that no matter how I receive those parts, this can still be assembled and function properly. A feature that I'm especially excited to show you is that I was able to incorporate the spiral slots within the Baron pads. This was something that was suggested by Stuart in a previous video and I thought it was a great idea, so I'm happy that it worked out. Another change on this pad was to increase the prominence of a bump feature that I created. You can see in this little sneak preview of my prototype, it's that slightly elevated feature in the center. This feature will cause the Baron pad to deflect outwards in the center, creating a high pressure region there as desired. In that snip, you probably also notice the color identifier sticker in the center of that bump feature. This will help the user know which texture that Baron pad is. Thanks to the testing from the first prototype, I've now created three different Baron pads, correlating to the different strengths that I want to see in a Baron. I now have a coarse, medium, and fine level. I also played with the bump geometry a little bit in order to further improve the sliding of this Baron. Finally, I want to talk about why I named this the Chameleon Baron. The main feature of this Baron that I'm excited about is the ability to change Baron pads and achieve new textures with the same main architecture. This is why I came up with Chameleon. Yeah, it was the concept of changing or evolving over time, which I liked. In addition, I was excited to add an element of color to this project. And so this is why I decided to color code the Baron pads, in addition, the felt that goes with each Baron pad. And finally, 
I really liked that a chameleon also could incorporate the kind of spiral geometry that I'm going for with this Baron in the tail, which I represented in the logo that I created. So this was kind of my inspiration and you can see it in the changing of the color on those felt pads. Now that you've seen what's new with prototype two of the Chameleon Baron, let's check out what these new parts look like. I've been waiting for all of the various prototypes to come in before I did the unboxing. The first to come were the sheet metal parts from Send Cut Send. I hadn't ordered from them before, but they came really fast and the packaging was really nice. You can probably notice the black powder coated oh. finish that was applied to these parts. This was something new from the last time. Also, shout out to Sen Cut Sen for the free high chews. It was a nice surprise. Next up were the parts from Zometry, which just like last time included the plastic handles and the baron pads. Again, I used the process MJF. This is a very unique 3D printing process which is patented by HP. It involves a thin layer of powder being spread across the build plate and a subsequent fusing agent being applied in selective regions. Finally, an infrared light is passed over that region in order to solidify those areas. This process can achieve parts with very high print resolution and near isotropic properties. Finally, I got an order of stickers from Amazon to help differentiate the Baron pads. I actually designed a small pocket within the Baron pad to receive these stickers. Now that you've seen the parts that I ordered, there's a few steps left before we can do the final assembly. The first step was to engrave the powder coated metal plates that I received from Sin Cut Send. This is a step that I didn't do for prototype number one, but it's probably the thing I was most excited about. Here I'm using a Glowforge, which is kind of an at-home laser cutter, to basically just melt away the powder coating. I'm putting in my logo on one side of the metal plate, and on the other side, the Chameleon logo, which you'll see in a moment. I designed both of these while I was waiting for these prototypes, and I'm pretty happy with how they came out. During this laser engraving process, I tested out several different parameters to find out which one would work best on this powder coating. I now know what laser speed, power, and resolution to use for next time I get these plates in. After they're done, they need to be wiped down to get that excess cloudiness off of the surface. I then recut the compliant rubber pads for this prototype. This is because the hole locations is slightly different than the last one, but going forward, I would love to lock in this geometry and keep it the same so I can reuse them. The same goes for the felt pads, but this time I was targeting to create three distinct colors, yellow, red, and green. My plan is to make red the color that corresponds to the most strong baron, yellow is in the middle, and green is kind of the lightest baron that you might use for key lines. The next key pre-assembly step is to fix the threaded inserts into my baron pads. It follows the same process as the last prototype, which involves pressing them in with a little bit of force and then melting them in with the soldering iron. I did make some minor changes to the boss geometry, which make this process a little bit easier. You can see as the insert heats up, it sinks down into that boss. Once again, I'm using a flat piece of metal, in this case a ruler, to help take away the heat from the insert and solidify it flat against the top of that boss.
The last pre-assembly step is a new one from the last prototype. This time, I'm adding a sticker on each bearing pad to help differentiate the textures. Like I mentioned earlier, green corresponds to the lightest bearing texture, yellow is right in the middle, and red is the strongest bearing, or the bearing pad with the least bumps on the bottom. The idea here is that these bearing pads can be matched up with their corresponding felt colors, and this will give the user a visual indicator of which bearing pad they have installed. The steel is engraved, the felt and rubber are cut, and the bearing pads are ready to be assembled. So let's put it all together. To start this final assembly, I have all the components laid out. First, I take the felt pads and match the color to that of the bearing pad. It aligns easily around the bosses, as well as the rubber compliant pad which I apply next. The stainless steel plate is also aligned in the same manner, and I intend the chameleon to be on top of the baron, the visible part. And finally, the handle rests right on top of the plate, also aligned by the bosses. The two screws are dropped into the pockets on the handle, ready to be installed with a screwdriver. I will say that as I was screwing this down, I realized that I'm still getting a little bit more compression than I would desire. For the next prototype, I'll correct this so that you just screw it until it bottoms out. As you can see, prototype 2 looks pretty different than the first. I kind of like the dark mode I have going on, I think it stands out pretty well against most other barons. Also, I think the spiral relief cuts are a really nice detail on this one. Now that the Chameleon Baron has come together, let's talk a little bit about how it compares to the first prototype and the future steps for this project. To start, I asked my neighbor's dog what he thinks of this prototype. Clearly, he likes the relief cuts on the bottom of this Baron. Okay. In all seriousness, here's the two prototypes side by side. Most of the changes are pretty easy to see from the outside, except a few that I mentioned earlier in the design review. In addition to Stuart's idea with the spiral relief cuts, I was also able to add in the random distribution of bumps that Jesse suggested on the last video. I have a feeling this will improve the performance, so thanks for the comment. One other note that I should make is that this Baron is heavy. The difference between the stainless steel and aluminum was really shocking to me, and it's honestly pretty cool, I really like it. Also, I'd love to hear what you think about the appearance of this Baron in the comments. Please let me know. From a more functional perspective, I want to talk about the biggest problem with the last prototype which was the scratchiness while you were rubbing or using the Baron. Now, the new Baron feels a lot better right off the bat, so try to listen for the difference in the sound while I rub it on this aluminum. Now, I might be reading into this test a little too much, but the new Baron seems to spin a lot longer, which would indicate it has lower friction. There's definitely some other factors that could cause this, so I'll take it with a grain of salt. Maybe more relevant is to see how the Baron feels on the actual wax paper that I'd use during printing. Here too, it feels a lot better, although you can't really hear the difference. I think two changes that I made really influenced this behavior. The first is a changed bump geometry. I decided to grow the size of each individual bump and increase the radius, which makes them a little less pointy and sharp than the first Baron. Also, I used a vapor smoothed finish on this new Baron, as opposed to the typical bead blasting. I'm not totally sure what that actually means, but it definitely feels a little bit smoother and like it would glide better. From here on, I'll keep these prototypes separate so that I can continue to compare and contrast them when it comes to printing. 
Also, just like last time, I'll make sure to take plenty of notes and write about the changes that I want to implement for the next prototype. I'm looking forward to sharing some actual printing results with this Baron. Until then, please let me know if you have any questions, comments, or feedback about this project. I'd love to hear what you think. Thanks again for your continued support, and until next time.